In this video, we'll do just that. We'll load an Angular component. Well, this would be pretty boring, so we'll do it in an exciting way. We'll load it dynamically as a custom element, as a native web component instead of a normal Angular component. What's great about that and how does it work? Let's take a closer look at this in this video. So let's get started with Angular Elements. What is Angular Elements? It's a feature of the Angular framework that allows you to turn your normal Angular components, which you use in your Angular app, into native web components. Web components are basically custom HTML elements, you could say. They are part of the, of the DOM of the JavaScript API. They're not related to Angular, and you can use them in vanilla JavaScript apps or in apps built with other frameworks. So that's web components, and that is what you can create with Angular elements. Now, before you get too excited, right now, at the point of time I'm releasing this video, when Angular 6 was released, the web components you're building with Angular can only be used in Angular projects still. And the obvious question then is, why would you build web components at all? What is the use of Angular elements if you can only use these elements inside of an Angular app? And the answer is, they are useful for loading dynamic content. So let's say you got a content management system on your backend on a server, and there your editors can create HTML code. They know how to write HTML code and therefore they create the content that gets loaded into your Angular app in HTML. Now, so far that is fine, but what if you actually want to enable them to also use some of your Angular components in the HTML code they prepare? If they do that, if they use your Angular component selectors and you then load this content dynamically in your Angular app, it will actually not work because your Angular app is compiled ahead of time, or even with just-in-time compilation, it's compiled before the content is loaded. So if the content contains the selector of an Angular element of an Angular component, this will not work, it will not recognize that. Let me show you what I mean. Here's a brand new Angular project created with the Angular CLI. Important, if we check the package.json file, I'm using Angular version 6, and I'm using RxJS version 6, and I installed the RxJS compat package to have no issues with RxJS. This might be needed uh, at the point of time of recording this. I need it for the Angular Elements package, which we'll use. In the future, you might not need this. All Angular packages should by default support the RxJS syntax. If you want to learn more about what changed with Angular 6 and why this RxJS 6 thing is so important, check out the separate videos I created on that. My Angular 6 update video and the RxJS 6 update video. But back to the Angular components. Let's create a new component. Let's name it alert component maybe. A normal Angular component. So in there I'll export a class, alert component like this. And of course we could create that with the CLI too. I'll import the component decorator. And in there, I'll define my selector, which is app alert, let's say, and a template, which could be, of course, an external file too. But here I'll simply add a div. And inside of the div, I'll say, this is an alert. And then we all even output a message here. So some string interpolation. Now, last but not least, I'll add my styles array here with um, a string in there to define some styles for this template. And there I simply want to style my div, give it a border of one pixel, solid and black, background of let's say um, Selman, so this is a light red color, and a padding of 10 pixels. And last but not least, uh, let me also define a font family, and Selman by the way should not be a string, let me define a font family of sans serif. Now this is my, my style for the, for the alert. Now the alert uses this message uh, property, so I have to add it here. And I want to make this bindable from outside, so I'll decorate it with add input, which I have to import from Angular core. And now with that, the component is finished, and we can now use it. To use it, we have to add it to our declarations array. There I add my alert component. And with it added here, we can go to the app component, to its HTML file to be precise, and in there we can use my newly created app alert component like this, 
And of course, also pass a mes message, which since it's a string can be passed like this without the square brackets. This is just a shortcut in case you are passing some text. And there I could say, this is a normal Angular component. With that, if we save all these files and we go back, we see our component there. Now the styling didn't work. Yeah, I should add uh, more semicolons uh, instead of commas. With that, now we got this alert. So this is a normal Angular component. Now let's say in the app component, we actually want to load this dynamically. I got this content property there, it's null initially. And now let's say, instead of outputting this component like this, we have a div and on this div, we use the inner HTML property binding to bind to the content. In the app component, in the constructor for simplicity reasons, I can then add my timeout just to simulate that this is an asynchronous task and we're getting this from a server. We don't have to put it into a timeout. We can also run this code once this app component loads, just adding this to, well, give us a little bit of time to prepare for the data to arrive, I guess. And in that function that executes here in set timeout, I now want to set this content to, let's say, a string that holds HTML, a paragraph. So this is obviously not using our element. I just want to show you that this works. We're now rendering this paragraph. If we inspect it, we see a paragraph is rendered to the DOM because we're using inner HTML. Now, it would be great if we could use our own element there. So if we could use app alert here, like this, app alert. And now we also set a message of rendered dynamically dynamically because we don't include it in our uh, component template. We're not including it in the app component HTML file, but here we're hard coding it into our code, but we could easily imagine that this is coming from an API call, that we're fetching this from a server. So if we do it like this and then we reload our app, we can wait forever. We won't see anything here. And if we inspect our app root, we see that the div indeed is empty. So nothing gets rendered here. And the reason for this is that this is rendered as HTML code, but it's not recognized as an HTML element. App alert is not a built-in element. It's our own component, but that exactly is what I meant. Angular will not consider this after it has loaded our app because the compilation of the templates and therefore the part where it understands your component selectors is already done by that point of time. And this doesn't change if we remove this from set timeout and execute it right at the beginning of this uh, component. So here, we don't see anything either. So this is not the reason. The reason indeed is that Angular doesn't compile this code. And Angular Elements fixes this issue or this problem, you could say. It allows us to basically take our Angular component and put it into a totally encapsulated, self-bootstrapping HTML element, which you can dump into your Angular app in this way, for example, and which will still work. Now, how do we create such a component? We need to install Angular elements. And you can already see that I added an import up here, create custom element. This has been lurking around for a while and it seems to be what we need. Now make sure that you install the Angular elements package with npm install dash dash save at Angular elements, just in case this isn't installed already. Now I'm recording this with a beta version, but of course, by the point of time you're watching this, it probably was released as part of the normal Angular framework. So once this is installed, you should also ensure that especially for the beta version, might not be a problem in later versions, that you got RxJS Compat because this is required for this uh, to run, at least right now. And very important that you add this line to your package.json file. This is a polyfill, which right now also is required for this to run. This might also change in the future, but right now you need to add this. So add this line with this version and rerun npm install thereafter to download it and add it to your project. And with that polyfill installed, you can go to the polyfills TS file and there you should add these two lines. Import at web components slash custom elements slash custom elements dot min and import at web components slash custom elements slash source slash native shim. This might also change in the future, but we right now need this to enable custom elements to ensure that this works, that the native element 
this custom elements uh, package or the Angular elements package spits out that this element works. Therefore, this is needed. So with that all added, with the polyfills added and with the packages added, we can now try creating a custom element. And for this in the constructor of app component, you want to do this in a place that runs early in your project. I'll create a new element and I'll name it alert element. The name is up to you. I'll store it in a constant which is named like this. And I will use create custom element. And now I need to import my custom element. I want to do this on the alert element. So you should make sure that you add an import to that. So import alert component from and now it's alert component. And down there, of course, it should also be alert component. Element is the name of the constant, but we pass in the component to create custom element. Now create custom element also needs a second argument. This argument is used to configure this element. And there we need to pass the injector we're using. Now Angular uses dependency injection, as you know, and the injector is basically the tool which does this injection. And we provide it to this custom element so that the element behind the scenes is able to connect itself to our app, so to say. Therefore, we simply inject the injector. So import injector from at Angular core. And with that injected, in that object you're passing to create custom element, you add the injector key and as a value, the injector you're injecting. That's a lot of injection going on, I guess. So with that, we created a custom element and this indeed already is a native uh, web component. Now we can use the custom elements API and important, this is not an Angular feature. This is a feature provided by JavaScript and called the finder. This allows us to register a custom web component. And again, alert element is just such a component. It's the same as we could have built on our own. So therefore here, we first of all define the tag by which we want to select it. And this doesn't have to be the same one as down here. So we could also use my dash alert, for example. And then you pass in the element. So not the component, but alert element. So our custom element. Now with this, we can use that. So down there, I use my alert instead of app alert because I changed the tag. And now if we save this, it compiles. And if we go to our application, nothing happens. But if we inspect the console, we actually got an error that we, well, that doesn't find a component factory. Now, as I said, Angular elements are only available in Angular apps right now. So what we have to do at this point of time is we have to add the entry components array to our app module. Entry components essentially is an array of components which you don't use with its selector or wire routing, but where you want to tell Angular that you're eventually going to use it. And this is exactly what will happen for the alert component. We declare it, that's important, so that Angular can find it. But we also need to tell Angular, hey, you won't see me use a selector for this. You won't see me loaded with routing, but eventually, I will need it. So please be prepared to load it when I need it. And that is why we also have to load the Angular component, excuse me, the alert component, not our custom element, but the Angular component here into our entry components array. And if we do that and we save, the app will reload and we get at least a warning, not an error, sanitizing HTML stripped some content. Now the custom element is in the end a bunch of JavaScript code. And this is sanitized, so this can't be rendered with inner HTML. That's a security mechanism to avoid uh, cross-site scripting attacks. We want this mechanism, but in this case, we know our content is safe, and therefore, we want to be able to output it. We can do this with the help of the DOM sanitizer. You can also inject this. It's the DOM sanitizer um, object or class which you need to import from at Angular platform browser. And with it injected, you can wrap this custom um, HTML code, which again, behind the scenes will use a lot of JavaScript. You can wrap this with DOM sanitizer bypass security trust HTML. So that this HTML code and whatever is connected to it is trusted. So now with that, if we reload this, we do see our alert after a second, but this time it's loaded as a custom element. If we inspect it, we see our template here 
and we see the styles we applied to it, but this now actually is loaded as a native web component. Still only usable in Angular projects. This will probably change in the future though, but already useful for dynamic content like this. Since we sanitize it, you should of course make sure that you know that this content is safe. But with that, you got a really great tool to load content into your app and control it as an Angular component and do all the fun stuff you can do with components whilst getting it from another source which is not hard-coded into your Angular project code when you're compiling it.